According to the American Thyroid Association, women are five to eight times more likely than men to be diagnosed with thyroid disease. Since two of the most common thyroid conditions are autoimmune in nature, their symptoms may often be confused with other health problems, which can make reaching a diagnosis for some a long and puzzling process. Today, the diagnostic journey of autoimmune thyroid disease, the symptoms, the risks, and how, due to advances in testing, one result just might provide the missing piece you've been looking for. I'm Erica Vitrini. Access Health starts now. The thyroid. A butterfly-shaped gland in the front of our neck produces hormones that are responsible for keeping our body's metabolism, heartbeat, temperature, mood, and more in check. Despite its small size, the thyroid gland plays a huge role in determining how our body functions and ultimately how we feel. Too much or too little of its hormones can have a major impact on our health and well-being. The most common causes of thyroid malfunctions are autoimmune disorders, which means instead of your immune cells protecting your thyroid tissue, they attack it and interfere with hormone production. Access Health caught up with Dr. Mark Lupo, director of the Thyroid and Endocrine Center of Florida, to learn more about these often underdiagnosed conditions. Because the thyroid has an impact on every part of our body, sometimes the symptoms can be vague and difficult to make a diagnosis. So often patients are being treated specifically for individual symptoms such as depression or sleeping problems, heart problems such as palpitations. So they go on this path of being on antidepressants or being referred for sleep studies or being told they need to just exercise more and eat less. And the thyroid is really not thought of as the unifying cause of these symptoms. It can be quite a diagnostic journey for people. My name is Kaylin, I'm 33 years old. I live in San Diego, California with my fiance Baxter and I also have a little dog named Eddie. I work as an organizational psychologist during the day and I teach night classes for a local university. I grew up in upstate New York. I'm from a family of four, I have an older brother. As a family, we were very healthy, very active. We always skied together every weekend. It was a family event. My brother and I loved skiing, and it turned into a sport for us as well. But I got a scholarship to go to school out in California. Since there isn't much skiing there, I actually ended up playing soccer for the university that I got the scholarship to. Towards the end of my doctoral program, I started experiencing things like feeling a little bit shaky. I had my hands would tremble. I didn't sleep very well. I was feeling physically anxious. It wasn't anything mental or emotional. It was just the physical feeling of always feeling anxious. And I, and I honestly, I didn't think that there was anything wrong with me. I, I, I thought that everything that I was experiencing was due to my own behaviors. That's what affected me the most out of everything that I was feeling because I really thought, okay, if I'm a little shaky or I'm not sleeping well, it's because I'm not on a good you know, pattern of sleep or maybe I'm just drinking too much caffeine and staying up late to study. But, but the physical feeling of being so anxious all the time, that was what really made me think maybe something's going on here. I did go to my doctor about it and he didn't think that I had any kind of anxiety disorder. He asked me, can you control it through exercise? And I said, yes, when I work out really hard, I feel better. And he said, well, if you can control it physically, then I wouldn't suggest putting you on medication. But he never asked me any other questions. I was feeling all of these symptoms in combination that I really couldn't explain. I really couldn't even analyze it and describe it myself. Autoimmune thyroid disease can take years to develop, often leaving patients with a shopping list of vague, variable, and nonspecific symptoms. For patients, the obvious can sometimes be the invisible. My name is Liz. I live on Siesta Key on the west coast of Florida. I'm 51 years old and I'm a clinical psychologist. I work mainly in criminal forensic settings all over Florida and Texas. I have a daughter who's 16, her name's Grace, and she's in the 10th grade. 
and we take a lot of trips together. We do a lot of um, hiking, snowboarding, basically just going on adventures, and we've done that ever since she was very young. When my daughter was around four, uh, I started having symptoms that I hadn't had before, such as feelings that my heart was, was racing, um, feeling like it was pitter-pattering, and al almost a feeling of anxiety, but there's nothing to be anxious about. So alternatively, I would feel very like cranked up, like that sort of nervous, like racy feeling. And then I would sometimes just feel exhausted. And so I thought I had a heart problem. So I went to a cardiologist and um, they, the cardiologist put me on uh, beta blockers. It did help the, um, the racy heart but I felt so tired and I talked to her about it and I said you know it's, there's there's got to be something else I can do because I really feel bad so I, I told her you know something is wrong and she said that I was just getting older many patients are seeking care and answers from specialists for individual symptoms that arise early in the disease process or being dismissed without help due to vague symptoms and are likely walking around undiagnosed. Autoimmune thyroid disease is the most common thyroid problem we see. Graves disease is the most common reason people have an overactive thyroid and that's when the immune system attacks the thyroid and tricks it into making too much thyroid hormone whereas Hashimoto's is the most common cause of an underactive or hypothyroidism. So the immune system attacks the thyroid and destroys the normal thyroid gland and patients then have underactive thyroid. When the thyroid's underactive or slow, people have brain fog, they have um, depression sometimes, fatigue, exercise intolerance, feelings of shortness of breath, they'll retain some fluid and gain a little bit of weight. Uh, become constipated, get cold easily, have dry skin, and sometimes hair thinning. On the other end of the spectrum, the immune system tricks the thyroid or stimulates it into making too much thyroid hormone. Everything is sped up, so people have anxiety, insomnia, they get fidgety, they're shaky, they have heart palpitations, again, exercise intolerance, feelings of inefficient breathing or shortness of breath, muscle weakness, sweating, and weight loss because the metabolism, metabolism is revved up. So patients individually can have both attacks at the same time. So that's why we think of it as a spectrum and not at either or. But all of those symptoms are not specific to thyroid. So in diagnosing a thyroid problem, we have to look at the whole picture, family history, physical exam, the patient's symptoms, other medications they might be on because sometimes it's not as straightforward as it would seem and it needs a very thorough investigative look. Coming up, what standard thyroid tests may not be telling you. Welcome back. Diagnosing thyroid disease is a process that incorporates numerous factors, including a clinical evaluation and imaging tests. However, blood tests for thyroid function provide some of the most crucial evidence for doctors. What are they testing for and what are the results telling us? So when first seeing a patient with suspected thyroid problems, we order a test called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. That's a hormone that comes from the pituitary, which is the master gland in the brain that communicates with hormone producing glands such as the thyroid. So that TSH gives us great insight into the thyroid balance status of the body. So if the TSH is normal, then generally that patient has normal thyroid function. If the TSH is abnormal, then we look at the actual thyroid hormones that the thyroid's producing. So that's T4, which is the predominant hormone that's produced by the thyroid that gets converted into T3, which is the more active thyroid hormone. So those are your options for what else can I test hormone-wise to see how severe either the overactivity or the underactivity might be. There's been some debate on what the reference range should be. So on a lab report, you'll have a a result and then there'll be a range that your doctor looks at but sometimes that individual result might be at the lower end of the range or the higher end of the range even though it may not be flagged as abnormal I begin to ask more questions do you have a family history of thyroid problems do you have any thyroid symptoms do you have any thyroid enlargement have you had a miscarriage are you trying for pregnancy all of these things that trigger the need to explore more. The problem is the underlying autoimmune disease and that can exist even if the TSH is normal. 
So we need to look deeper into options for testing and identifying those patients who may be at risk for autoimmune thyroid disease and not know it. We were on our annual ski trip over Christmas and New Year's and we had bought tickets to this really nice mountain and I was really excited to ski. And as we went up the chairlift, the first run went pretty tough. My lower legs were really stiff, they were really hurting, and I just assumed it was because it was cold outside. I went to the rental shop and I tried three different pairs of boots and it didn't matter what I was wearing. I was in so much pain I couldn't ski at all that day, but I still explained it away as being the boots. One of the things that I decided that I was going to do was create a running goal, so I was gonna run a half marathon. And I just remember my legs would get so stiff that I couldn't even run because I couldn't feel them anymore. And when I'd reach down to feel them, they would be as hard as a rock. I assumed that it was because I, I really didn't stretch much before I would go running. So I started doing yoga and thinking that that's what was wrong. I flew back to New York for an interview in April. My mother met me in the city and we got a hotel the night before my interview and, and she took one look at me and she said, you need to go to the doctor the day you get home. She could tell by the way that I looked and I think the way that I was behaving also that there was something wrong. You could tell that I was feeling very physically anxious. It was hard for me to catch a breath, but I was so exhausted that we couldn't really walk around the city like we normally would. Uh, she wanted to take me shopping and I was just too tired. It hurt to walk. And at that time, she could see the lump in my throat and my eyes were also uh, protruding. I explained away every single symptom that I felt until somebody else could see it and tell me there's something wrong with you. I had a girlfriend who is a professional kite surfer. So I learned to kite surf and we would go kite surfing in various different places. So one year we were out in the gorge to kite surf for a week. By the time we get to the gorge, my eyes were hurting really, really bad. After this maybe five hour flight, I think that's the first time that I figured out something was really weird with my eyes because they had never done that before. They had never gotten so inflamed that I was having to actually treat them for an entire week. We'd go out and um, we'd kite surf for hours and then we'd come back and I would literally like go to the car and just drop and she'd come to the car, eat an apple and go back out for four hours and I couldn't do that. So I sort of attributed it to that I was maybe like getting older and a little bit out of shape. So um, my solution was to come home and get more built up. So I came home and I started with a personal trainer to actually you know, build up my stamina. I think that it did make me feel stronger and, make, and, and give me some more endurance. But I still had problems with feeling tired. So I would see my gynecologist every year and every year she would tell me that she thought that there was something wrong with my thyroid and she wanted to do specific thyroid testing. And Every year she did, and every year she would tell me that it would come back within normal limits. One day though, it, it became really bad. My daughter and I went to space camp, and my daughter and I had gone to space camp every year from when she was seven on. It was one of her favorite things to do. I woke up and my eyes were bulging and so bloodshot. I thought that I wasn't sleeping well because I'm in space camp. I'm sleeping on this horrible mattress, and I've flown here, which irritates my eyes but I really felt terrible. I, I got a primary care doctor and I told him that what was wrong with me now was that I had developed an allergy to cats. He looked at me and he said, I'm gonna run some blood tests. Not just the typical thyroid panel, which my gynecologist had been running for years, but he said that there was a test that he wanted to run and he called me back in and he told me that I had Graves' disease. Patients like Liz and Kaylin are not alone in their struggle. In a sizable number of people with autoimmune thyroid conditions, routine blood tests can fail to detect the antibodies allowing the disease to progress. So because autoimmune thyroid disease is what is causing the thyroid function problem, we have to look at what the immune system is doing, so we have to look beyond those basic tests. Up next, technology takes a leap towards early diagnosis. Welcome back. The diagnosis of autoimmune thyroid disease can be elusive, leaving patients questioning their symptoms even after they leave the doctor. 
According to the guidelines published by the American Thyroid Association, measurement of thyroid antibodies for confirmatory diagnosis of autoimmune thyroid disease is recommended. Dr. Lupo explains that there are antibodies in the blood that through innovations and testing can be detected to confirm Hashimoto's and Graves' disease before it may even be reflected in a patient's TSH. There are different types of thyroid antibodies in the blood. Some of them will stimulate the thyroid to make excess thyroid hormone, and we see that in Graves' disease. Some of them will block the thyroid and decrease the thyroid hormone production, causing hypothyroidism. Some of them will destroy or damage the thyroid, and those are the thyroperoxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies that we see typically in Hashimoto's. There are times where the TSH test is normal, but the thyroid is already under attack by the immune system. So the times we think about that would be if there's a strong family history, if there's some symptoms suggestive of thyroid or previous history of thyroid TSH results that fluctuate a little bit. Very importantly, if there's a young woman who has had trouble becoming pregnant or who has had miscarriages, screening with a TSH is not enough. Looking at thyroid antibodies is very important to explain those reproductive problems which are quite treatable with thyroid medication. Other times we see patients with thyroid eye disease, so the eyes become bulging, the vision becomes impaired, the eyes can ache or be irritated seemingly maybe eye allergies or something else, but that can be Graves' disease where those antibodies that attack the thyroid, the TSH receptor antibodies, also attack the fat and muscle behind the eye and cause the bulging, and that can occur with a normal TSH. So my test results were saying that I was normal, but I wasn't. I wasn't feeling normal and I wasn't feeling right. Fortunately, finally, someone said, let's figure out why, and then they ran that one extra test that was able to give the answer. Remembering that Graves' disease is the immune system attack where the thyroid is tricked and stimulated into making excess thyroid hormone, if we can measure something that's very specific as a stimulating immune system attack, that would give us a definite diagnosis of Graves' disease. But there are different types of tests. So the older tests looked at these TSH receptor antibodies, but didn't tell us exactly if it was stimulating or blocking. And now we have a test that's a bioassay, meaning we're measuring the exact cause of Graves' disease. So that's the TSI, or TSH stimulating immunoglobulin, that we can measure directly to confirm a diagnosis of Graves' disease, and at that same time, determine how active the immune system is against the thyroid so if we know why the thyroid is misbehaving, then we can guide treatment better and we can make predictions on outcomes and prognosis. I called my general practitioner and it was gonna take him a month to see me. He suggested that I go to urgent care. And as soon as I got there, both the LPN who took my blood pressure and the urgent care doctor asked me, do you have a family history of thyroid disease? And I said, my mother does. And they said, well, we think you do too. We're gonna to get all your blood work done and they did and it came back within a couple of hours and he said, yep, you have Graves' disease. My levels were so far off that my doctor had asked me about my symptoms and how long I had been experiencing those symptoms and he said that considering how far along I was and how bad my levels were, that I had probably had the disease for a year before I was diagnosed. In my experience with the treatment and management of thyroid disease, patients do very well, in large part due to these new innovative tools we have to recognize the autoimmune etiology of thyroid disease and manage these patients better. Since being diagnosed and finding a great doctor, accepting that there really is something wrong and I need to take some downtime and take care of myself and stay on a, a regular regimen with my medication. I am back to enjoying life in San Diego and being active on a regular basis. So my advice to people who think they might have a thyroid problem is simply talk to your doctor. Call the office, make an appointment, explain what symptoms you're having and ask whether or not thyroid testing would be appropriate. I'm very lucky that my primary care doctor actually listened to my symptoms and ran some tests so that I, I didn't get very sick and I'm, I am actually able to continue to do all the things that I want to do. If you're struggling for answers and aren't feeling quite like yourself, it's important to talk to your doctor and ask about testing your thyroid. 
For more information on the antibody test discussed here today, visit Quidel.com or Thyrotain.com. If you're a patient already suffering with thyroid disease, you can also reach out to the Gray's Disease and Thyroid Foundation for support. And as always, you can find a guide to thyroid symptoms and helpful links on our website, accesshealth.tv. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. See you next time.